Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and in this video I'm going to explain how to teach your child column addition so that they will really understand what they're doing and they'll become fluent at it. If you don't need this video you can skip straight to the next one which is about the foundations of subtraction. To understand this video you will need to understand how to use base 10 apparatus. So if you haven't watched that video, it's essential you watch it first and here's a link to it now. It's also helpful to watch the video on the foundations of addition, but it's not essential. Here's a link to that video if you do want it. Okay, let's get going. So if you've done the exercises with base 10 materials, your child can do and understand column addition. Let's see how we get started with it. So if we start with a simple column addition like this one, your child is going to build the number 231 with your base 10 blocks or squares on paper or whatever you've got, or with your place value counters. Then they're gonna build this number 415. Then they're gonna put all their apparatus together and see how much apparatus they've got. And very quickly, they should see that they've got 646. They should have six hundreds, four tens, and six ones. That's very straightforward. There's no exchanging in that calculation. The challenge comes, say, if we change that one into a seven. If they build 237 with their apparatus and 415 and put them together, they should quickly see that they've got 12 ones. So they're going to need to exchange those 12 ones into a 10 and then they will get the answer 652. And if they've got to grips with their base 10 apparatus, they can cope if they have to exchange more than once. They might have more than 10 ones, so they have to exchange 10 ones for a 10. And they may also have more than 10 tens, so they have to exchange 10 tens to 100. And they could end up with more than 10 100s, so they've got to exchange 10 100s to 1,000. And all that could be going on in one calculation. But if they're doing it with the apparatus, they can cope. It's fun, and they'll be able to write their answer in the answer space, so they understand what they're doing. Now we're going to apply some discipline, so they really learn the standard notated method. But we're going to do it with the calculations that they've just done with the apparatus, or with the apparatus to the side, so they can really see what's going on. So the rules for column addition are that we start at the right. That's counterintuitive. We're used to starting at the left for reading, and we're used to, when we calculate mentally, starting with the big numbers, because they're more important, they matter. So this is very counterintuitive. We start at the right with the ones, we add them, and that gives us 12. We've just done it with our apparatus. We know only two of those 12 end up as ones. We only end up with two ones because the other 10 are going to become a 10. So we need to record that extra 10. Then when we put the 10s together, we had three from the 237. We had one from the 415. And we've got the extra one that was made from the ones. So altogether, we have five tens. And finally, very straightforward here, we've got two hundreds from the 237, we've got four hundreds from the 415, so we've got six hundreds all together. And it can be helpful to use squared paper to line up your columns carefully, and you may want to head those as well, hundreds, tens, and ones. Or if you prefer, you can head them hundreds, tens, and ones. And that's it. Of course it's not. Your child needs a lot of practice and there are some very predictable mistakes they're going to make along the way as they practice. So the fabulous Jeff Kutcher has created some worksheets for me which you can download for free from my Facebook group or from the other stores with links on my YouTube channel. There are worksheets on formal column addition with two digit numbers with and without exchanging ones for tens and there are worksheets on adding three digit numbers and there are four levels of worksheets for those. There's a worksheet where you're not exchanging, there's a worksheet where you're exchanging ones for tens, there's a worksheet where you're exchanging twice, and there's a really wicked fourth worksheet on adding two three digit numbers where you have to exchange three times because the answer is more than a thousand. If your child can cope with those, 
then they're ready to move on. So let's just talk about some of the mistakes your child would make and how to work with them. And then I'll explain a little bit about why we need a lot of practice on column addition at this stage. Okay, here's one of those worksheets. This first question is 645 plus 197. 645 plus 197. Now, at some stage, your child will forget to work right to left. All children do. It's so counterintuitive and they'll wade on in here and work left to right. Seven. That's easy. We've got the seven. It's drawn them in. And then we add the four and the nine. And that gives us 13. And then what on earth do you do? It just gets quite messy. Well, really, we have to say, well, there are three tens and there's an 100, so we can rewrite that as an eight. And then if we carry on and add the five and the seven ones, well, there are 12 ones, oh, that's two ones, but we've got an extra 10, so we've got to increase that three to a four. So the answer is 842, which is correct. This is real and sensible and logical. And if they've managed to do that and get the right answer, give them a ton of credit and then say, yeah, but that's why we work right to left because it's so much easier because you don't get all this mess. And all this mess means that you're likely to introduce mistakes. Second thing, when your child makes mistakes, which they will, don't tell them what they've done wrong. Just tell them it's not quite right and give them the apparatus, make them work with the apparatus and puzzle out for themselves exactly what they've done wrong and let them fix it themselves and help them with that if they need help and are just getting frustrated or give them a break if they just need a break. That's the joy of working one to one with a child. You can do that and come back to it when they're fresh. Third tip about mistakes. If your child is really struggling to read the numbers correctly, if you think they might be dyslexic and they're seeing the numbers in the wrong order, you need to slow down. And for each number, like 645, build it out of arrow cards for them or with them or encourage them to do it themselves, carefully matching up the numbers so that they can see that the six is the 600 and the four is 40 and the five is one. Get them to build both numbers, then build the apparatus, then translate their apparatus answer into arrow card numbers and then carefully copy the answer in. Arrow cards are easy to find on the internet or you can make your own. And what should happen after a while is that your child translates the question into arrow cards and then is able to add the arrow card numbers without actually using apparatus and then write the answer in. And then gradually they'll be able to drop the arrow cards. It just takes longer if they're struggling with dyslexia. With every child, they should be using apparatus for as long as they need to use apparatus. And that will be until they've got really secure images of the apparatus in their imagination. And they've got enough working memory to manipulate those images, which comes with age as the brain matures. And it comes at different rates for different children, but it comes. So one of the reasons for doing lots of practice with these worksheets is for those errors to come and for you to go through the process of correcting them with your child as many times as they need to until they're really, really secure with what they're doing. And if you do download my worksheets, there's buttons on the bottom of them that you can click on and they'll take you to Jeff's notebook website where you can download the interactive versions that will generate you more and more worksheets and worksheets with answers or you can just ask Siri for the answers. My still worksheets you can download on your phone and send them to the printer. With Jeff's interactive worksheets that will generate more and more examples, you need a laptop or a desktop computer and you need Adobe Acrobat Reader to get those. So here's a summary of the three types of mistakes children make and how you should work with your child if they're making those mistakes. Now, there's another reason children need lots of practice. That's because they need to speed up. Every time you're adding two digits in one of these calculations, you're practicing these small additions and they matter. Your child should be doing them so often that they become automatic. There are only 45 of these additions. Now there are 20 
where the answer is less than 10. And your child needs to be able to do these almost automatically. If they're not sure, they should use their fingers. But there are 25 where the answer is more than 10. And it is absolutely essential at this stage of maths development that your child learns to do these calculations without counting on one at a time. So let's just pick one. So this one, six add nine. Well, we can start with the nine. We can use one of the six to make 10. That leaves five of the six left. So the answer is 15. And that's what these tricky worksheets are all about. So here, this first calculation, four add nine. You need to check that your child is not saying 10, 11, 12, 13. They need to add the four to the nine by using one to fill 10 and knowing that there are three of the four left. So the answer is 13. So four add nine, three, one to carry. Then we've got eight and one is nine and we've five to add on. So use one of the five to fill the 10 and we've four left. So the answer is 14. We carry one again, five and one and one is six. So it ain't just what you do, it's the way that you do it. And your child needs to do lots of these until they're fluently adding in two steps when the addition goes past 10. If your child is seven or eight years old, they should be doing some of these calculations every day for quite a while. If your child's older and they're going through this work as catch up, you still need to do it until they are fluent. The worksheets on adding three digit numbers where you're exchanging three times are real killers. And when your child knows what they're doing, they're gonna be able to do them really quickly and they're actually gonna enjoy doing them. When they've built that level of fluency, it's a great idea to vary the calculations they're doing. Just write down a couple of numbers or maybe even three or four numbers for them to add together at random. They don't have to all have the same number of digits. You can have a two digit number added to a three digit number. That's great. Or you might add two two digit numbers and a three digit number. When your child can deal with that, they've got this topic. Well done. The key takeaways from this video are that to deeply understand column addition, your child needs to be able to do it with base 10 apparatus. If they're making mistakes, they need to go back to the apparatus to sort them out and they should be able to do that. If they forget the method, they should still be able to puzzle out answers and they should do loads and loads and loads of these calculations until they become fluent and they'll have achieved fluency when they've done all of these calculations within the big calculations so often that they're nearly automatic and they're doing the calculations that have answers more than 10 in two steps rather than counting on one at a time. So that's loads for you to work on with your child. I hope you enjoy it now that you really understand what you're doing, how important it is and exactly what the journey you're taking is. If you're struggling, please ask questions in the comments. I love to chat to people in the comments. You can see some of that going on on earlier videos. If you've not subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe and click on the bell. If you think your friends will find it useful, please share it on social media. I'll be back tomorrow with a video on the foundations of subtraction. Bye for now.